Let me just record this so I can uh, upload it to for the guys who couldn't make it. All right, so um, last, well, two nights ago, we were discussing um, the basics of the Heikinashi, right? So we spoke about the Heikinashi um, and the benefits of it and how it could potentially be something much better, more useful rather for you than the normal candlestick formations, all right? So the main point we got is that it's more of an averaging of the candles, right? Because it uses previous candle data to make the calculation of whether it's red or it's white. So really just gives us a nice and smooth um, pricing. So you, it enables obviously you to stay a bit longer in those trades, right? And if used correctly as a confirmation, will keep you out and help you filter out a lot of trades that could potentially be losing or um, markets that are just gonna move sideways and stuff like that. So, like I said, um, we did mention the moving average that we are gonna be using. Okay, um, you can use any moving average that you wish to, okay, depending on which time frame that you actually use. However, anything 50 and below should be sufficient for this purpose, okay? So what we're looking for is essentially a close above or below one of the moving averages, right? And obviously everything else needs to form in line with what we, what we usually look for, right? So that previous market structure, we're looking for the swing high, swing low, uh, previous weeks high, previous weeks low, along with, uh, let's say, Fibonacci 50 and 62 percent retracement area, right? So, Fib zone. So, either one of those, and then you'd have obviously your Heikinashi candle, a break above or below the moving average. So, let's say for this instance, right? So, for example, we're just going to be using a 50 moving average, okay, applicable on any particular time frame, but the higher the time frame, obviously, the longer the time or the, the less trades you're gonna get rather. And the shorter the time frame, as well as the shorter the, the moving average itself, right? Or the smaller the moving average um, looks back, then the more frequent you're gonna get positions, right? So just be in mind, right? Because you need to sort of like make that balance. Now, we are looking at um, this is the GBP USD, right? GBP USD, you have a nice smooth uh, run up to the upside. Boom, right? This is a week, right? Let's just remember that. This is one full week, and I already highlighted this area over here. Okay, you had a swing high, which was the swing high week, sort of like established the high of the week, and the market pulled away bit of a distance and Friday that swing high was penetrated just a little bit and then the market um, came back I think during Asian session right from the on Monday I believe and yeah of course the market pulled away from that low and we could have had a possible entry when the market swung low and closed below one of those moving averages right so in this instance we are talking the 50 moving average. Boom. Right. So the market dropped, right? Established this low, which was about 145 pips. And if you've really done your analysis on markets and your research and gathered enough data, you'd understand or you would have a really good idea of where your take profits would be for a swing trade on the euro dollar or swing trade on the GBP USD, because like I said, those aren't, the market's different, right? So there's different volatility in different markets, and therefore we take profits as well as stop losses need to be specific for that particular market if you want to be able to consistently have uh, success, right? So if you want to make profits on a consistent basis, you need to understand a lot about the markets that you actually trade, right? So, um, yeah, market pulled away and we had a nice drop of about 120 pips and based off what the average weekly range on the GBP USD is, you cut that in half and I think you would have probably been 
out towards that low of the week on that particular trade setup, okay? And so that is just an example of using that as confluence, as confirmation of the direction itself, okay? So you're waiting for something to confirm, right? You might not be certain, you see the moving average, um, spike or the price rather, bouncing off the 200 moving average, but you're not quite certain whether you should get into the trade or you should leave it, right? So once you see a nice aggressive candle, like this one shifting to the downside, closing below that 50 moving average, that could be something that you can use as confirmation of the market heading downwards, okay? All right, guys, you're good. Right. So another important piece of information, of course, is the one where we look for the actual market structure, right? So when we're talking market structure here, we're talking the previous support and resistance, right? Which is then broken to form support, right? So if we were to look at, let's say, H1, okay, let's just look at the one hour. Okay, um, well, this is a bad one, but just so we don't stay here the whole night. Let's use this one. Boom. Okay, so let's say 25.10. 25.10 was a previous support. Boom, market moved away and broke below that 25.10, right? Came back, retested that same area and then shifted to the downside. And then twice again, came back to that 25.10 level and the market moved to the downside, okay? So that is market structure. Now, what you'd like to happen then is if you have the market and you need something to confirm that particular trade entry or you're waiting for something to give you um, confirmation, then you would use the Heikenashi as a tool to help you to achieve that, right? So you'd have the cross of the 50 moving average, right? Okay, let me just try and zoom that in. Okay, so here's what would happen, right? So basic scenario is you have this support. Okay, boom. Ah, um, yellow. Right, um, you have support, boom market shifts away and breaks to the downside and then comes back in, boom, right. See that support turns into resistance or you just simply term um, liquidity area where smart money is, is willing to sell at, okay. And also a big figure, which is a round number and market shifts to the downside, boom. So now what you'd want to happen and instead of just using a candlestick as a pen bar or something like that which sometimes can be deceiving the uh, hey can actually helps you to establish and to get a sense of where the actual momentum is going right okay you're with me and so a close of the moving average 50 below with a nice aggressive candle you don't want to see small candles but a nice aggressive candle to the downside gives us a heads up that okay now there is a possible downtrend that we have um, coming right so if your entry would be somewhere at the close of um that uh candle right so when the market closes just below there then you'd have your entry right there. So that does one of two things, right? It's because a lot of guys see patterns, right, really well, but the issue is that they don't really have sort of like the patience. Okay, they don't necessarily have the patience to be able to stick with the position or to take, to wait until the the, the, the setup is actually ripe for picking, basically. Right. So the market will do this, right? Boom, come down, and you get a 
this type of candle, right? So once, the, as soon as this, well, this was a white candle going up, right? So as this white candle goes up, they start shorting into the right? market will shift slightly down and then pull back up again, take out those stop losses, right? Or just hold your position for a few, few hours, few days, or a few weeks, and then you will start moving now. What the Hekinashi does is that it enables you to get into the trade when the market is actually moving. Right, so a break below or a break above um, the moving average signifies that the market could be ready to move. So when you see this, boom, close below, that's where you see, all right, there is momentum to the downside now based off type of candle that I'm looking at and the close below the moving average, the 50 moving average, and therefore I should be looking at shorting opportunities. Okay. Now, obviously we're not going to discuss targets and take profits and stop losses and all of that here, but you can see you had about a 70 pip drop, which depending on which time frame you are trading, right? Or outlook, rather, don't want you guys to get confused i'm not talking time frame as a literal let's say time horizon so you are uh, intraday which is same day swing trade which is a few days or position trade few months or few weeks okay so which time horizon that you are looking at you'd have either a 70 to 75 pip take profit or a 150 to 200 pip take profit and of course, that has a lot to do with the currency that you are trading. Right, so if we look at that, then we have a really good, we have a really good idea or we have a really neat tool that can help us sort of like trade in line with the general trend, first of all, and catch the market when it starts to move. Now, the great thing about using the Hekimashi or any sort of like, momentum trading strategy is that your stops can be a bit tighter and your take profits can be a bit larger right so it's really good for risk reward <clears throat> okay so if you want to have a risk reward of one is to two or three or five or six then using the hekinash can really improve that for you okay all right do we are we question free for now Any questions? Okay, no problem. And so, although uh, uh, the Hikinashi combined with the moving average can give us a lot of solid trade setups, we still do want to trade in line with the overall trend, okay? So we want to trade where the market is, okay, where the big moves are. All right. So, for example, okay, if we are looking at uh, the GBP USD, right, we know it's a downtrend, okay, because we've already gone through the larger time frames, and we see there's a series of red candles to the downside, and then a few white candles and it's firmly moving below the moving average on the higher time frames, which means that the trend is down. So we're looking at shorting opportunities rather than buying opportunities. Right? So primarily we're looking at shorting opportunities as opposed to buying. So if, let's say for example, we had a spike right above the swing high over here, that would warrant us, that would warrant some attention from us, right? So let's just add that one on there. <clears throat> okay, just for the sake of the example. And we had that spike, boom, to the upside. The moving average is here, right? We're using the 50 in this instance. What you'd like to see is the close below that moving average, here. boom. Okay, now this is probably quite a distance from here to this swing low about 75 pips so depending on the size of the account and stuff like that i mean you can then go in and take the risk but the reward side is also going to be pretty decent if you're risking about 70 pips we will be able to make 
need to target at least three to five times that trading this sort of method, okay? All right, so, boom, all right, market comes in, closes with an aggressive candle just below, all right? This was not the entry because you can see the market or the candlesticks were not closing, all right? They were bouncing off, heading up in the opposite direction, okay? But they weren't breaking that 50 moving average and giving us a trade setup, okay? So in terms of structure then, we had previous days high and then the confirmation came in that the market is ready to shift because we can stay up there for a while. The market can spike up the previous days high and hang around there for a good two or three days. You don't really want to be tying up your margin that much if you have a relatively small account and you want to be trading markets that are actually moving and this allows you to do so. Okay, so let me just try and find one more very simple example. Okay, so even though we know that we are in upward or in a downward trend, even if we do find a buy sort of like signal, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Okay. I'm just seeing all these sell opportunities here. Here's one as well. Um, similar to the example that we just went through, the high was established, okay? The swing high and the market came back, which happens to be the high of the week as well as the previous day's high. And then the market shifts away from that particular zone, closes below with a really big candle and yeah, from there, um, don't know what happened there. Okay, so can't remember where I am now. Okay, I think we're here. If I'm not mistaken. Don't think it really matters all that much. Yeah. Right, so here's one. Right? So we have high of the week. I think it's the high of the week, but it's definitely the previous day's high. So this is Monday, separated by this two, which is obviously Sunday. And the market hits this high and comes back in, tags that level drops up, uh, moves above it, closes above it, and then pulls back to the downside. Now, obviously there has to be a limit because we can see that the trade candle closed here. But to that swing high, that's about 60 pips, right? Still not a bad, um, bad amount of pips to be risking because there's a potential for at least 200 to about 300 pips on this particular move. But looking at it in hindsight, we can see that it actually worked. But while you are trading and you're in front of your screen, you don't have the benefit of hindsight to say, right, this trade worked out because of this, 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 and that. Right? So you have to trade the markets as they come. So at this close over here, boom, should you have gone in, first thing you'd actually do is to see if the risk side is still worth it. Okay. You don't want to have too wide of a stop. So if, for example, you have normally a 300 pip move on the GBP USD on average, right? And this particular move itself, you, you're not going to catch the high. You're not going to catch the absolute low of it. So you're not going to get 300 pips exactly when it comes to the GBP USD on your swing trades. So what you'd want to happen is, uh, you want to have at least about half of that as you take profit, okay? So if the Euro USD moves 500 pips per week, a week on average, then 250 pips would probably be your target on average for your swing trades, okay? 
All right, so, and since we have this close here, boom, we can choose to take it. However, if it's too large, right? So if you have this entry and the immediate swing high is, let's say comfortably above 50 pips, then it shouldn't be worth it. Okay, you'd rather let the market um, run away from you than to chase the market because there's always the risk or the possibility rather that the market can go up one more time. All right. And you don't want to be knocked out of a profitable trade just because you have your stop loss too tight. Okay. A lot of people think that is um, one way to to become consistent or to to limit risk by having a tight stop rather use a smaller lot size with a bigger stop loss than having a tight stop loss with a huge lot size that the market will flush it out very easily so rather place your stop loss as i always say in a position where if it gets triggered then it confirms that you are absolutely wrong. I want to be absolutely wrong if I lose money. I don't want to be right on the trade and still lose money, which is what a lot of people tend to do. If I'm right, I want to make money. And if I'm wrong, I want to lose small amounts of money. Okay, measured amount. Okay. Guys are good. Right, do you guys have any questions or, I mean, I feel like you guys are extremely quiet today. Okay, um, if there's no questions, then I'll head towards rounding up and just finishing up things for you guys. Um, this has been recorded session, so if you missed the earlier parts of it, we'll be able to get the recording. So. I'll put that up and then send through the link in the WhatsApp group. All right, so now the main points of tonight's session was obviously number one is the Heikinashi, right? So Heikinashi is very, very, very useful tool if used correctly, right? So you can't trade with it alone, right? And that is why we employ moving average, which in this example I brought up as the 50 moving average but anything below 50 can give you like a really decent um, sort of like entry. So anything below 50, so let's say let's cut it to 15. Okay, so the period is 15, boom. Okay, it also provides a decent entry for us for for getting into a trade, right? So, because the one thing that we are looking at is momentum and shift from, let's say, retracement going up, right? So the market was going up, it was retracing up. But what we want to spot is that first burst of momentum to the downside, which is evident in these types of candles. So that short would have, or that particular trade setup would have made us or giving us the impression that we are heading downwards and therefore we should consider going short right so as i said you can use the 15 anything between 15 and 50 but i prefer you just go for the 15 or 20 right as a way for you to confirm uh, the shift in momentum from the upside to the downside there's a bunch of other stuff that we still need to go over in terms of confluence right so you're not just going to be looking at the moving average itself and the hair can actually cross up and then you buy it, cross down and then you sell. I mean, you'd be in the market all the time. Every minute of every single day, you'd be in the market. However, they do filter out a lot of trades that could potentially wind up going sideways, right? No volume in the market, no, not a lot of volatility. So it's just stagnant. And as well as early entries, right, where 
people are looking to short into a runaway bull market, this helps us avoid that. Okay, having the moving average and the Hikinash cross helps us to actually avoid that. Okay, so yeah, you can go back into your charts, right? Um, you can do a bit of back test, right? Um, I think most of the guys already have the simulator running and all of this stuff, so you can just run that through the trading simulator, and then from there, it should make things much clearer. But if not, you can just do your manual back test. Just take screenshots and mark them out and that sort of stuff. And just familiarize yourself with um, the Heikinashi cross with the 50 or the 50 moving average either. And therefore, and just sort of like take what we've been doing with market structure, the Fibonacci, and you just add that on, on top of it, okay? For our entries and exits. Right, so um, not sure if you guys have any questions. We have about a few minutes left. No questions? Okay, guys, um, I will end off today's session here and I will be uploading the video through to YouTube. So, and then I'll send through the link in the WhatsApp group. Okay. All right, guys, cheers.